to put down this party shop. So quick. Tell me, Captain, where is Smithfield? Boom, there you go. That was the prologue. Very good forward, a Star Trek fan production. And as you see on the screen, I'm excited to have a pair of friends. I've got my man, John Broughton, the man who's been giving you Farragut for such a long time. There he is, the commander himself. And of course, longtime pal, good buddy, my man, Johnny K. What's going on, fellas? How are you today? Good, man. Right. Thanks for having us. No worries. No worries. I, thank you for taking time out your weekend. Uh, I want to help you all uh, with getting this Indiegogo campaign into to the moon, to the out into the universe. Let's get it all up there because uh, it, it just yeah, it deserves it. You've been committed. I know, John, this has been your baby for a long time. And, and with Johnny back there, he needs more tools to do the work. So the more money, we can have more fun and make it an even bigger, grandiose production. Um, I'm super excited. And again, thank you guys for taking time out your day for this. Um, but before we get into more about like why people should support the campaign, let's tell them like this history that you have behind this. Like uh, for both of you, uh, I'm assuming Star Trek fans. Well, when was your first introduction to Star Trek? Let me go with you, John. Tell me uh, how old were you? You know, what was the first iteration of Star Trek uh, and what made you fall in love with it? Was that for Johnny or? or, or uh, John Broughton. That's right. Because I got a John okay. K and I got a John Broughton. Right. Uh, John right. Broughton. Um, I remember seeing Star Trek in syndication, but I also remember when I, 1982 in the summer, my dad took the family into a drive in theater. He opened up the um, station wagon hatch and we all watched Star Trek to the Wrath of Khan in our sleeping bags. And that's probably my most vivid memory of, of Star Trek. And I had enough knowledge from what I saw in syndication to kind of know what was going on. I just thought it was the greatest thing ever. I love it. I love it. So was that the first time you you said you, you watched Star Trek? Was that uh, I, I when watched, went to I movies? Remember, oh, no, I, you said you saw the cinema. Okay. I, I saw a lot of the episodes in syndication. Okay. The first episode I remember was the episode Mary with all these kids running around screaming. And I... As a kid, I was like, what's this all about? But that's my yeah. first episode memory. Gotcha. But then I would say you would say the movie, that movie. Oh, yeah. Star Trek 2. That. that just was like, this is it, baby. I'm all in now, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love exactly. it. I love it. Awesome. Awesome. Johnny, uh, you and I think about the same age. Well, I, I, so I think for both, of, for all three of us, it's that original crew uh, is what brought us, is what got us into Star Trek. Is it the same for you, Johnny, or Next Generation? When did you come into it? <laughs> Man, I'm a I'm a next generation baby, you know. Really? Like, yeah. So I I love the movies, but I didn't get into the movies until after Next Generation hooked me. So it was Next Generation hooked me. The first episode I saw, I think it's called Matter of Honor, which is the one where Riker is like an exchange officer and he goes oh. to the on ship. That's the first episode I ever saw, and I was like, wow, you know, I'm hooked. Let me see what the Star Trek thing is all about. I had seen some original series stuff in syndication, like when I was way little, but not. You know, I didn't know what was going on. I just liked all the primary colors, like yellow, you know, yellow shirts, red shirts, blue shirts. Um, so I was excited about that. But yeah, it was Next Generation that hooked me. And then I went back and started watching the movies. And that's when I had my Wrath of Khan moment when I watched, you know, two, three, four. I think the first one I might have saw in a theater was was Star Trek four or five, something like that. But yeah, I'm 80s baby all the way, as you know. Yes. OK. All right. OK. I'm surprised that you weren't hooked off of the the, the earlier crew stuff. It was next gen but next gen was pretty cool too i love it okay um so star trek fans you guys these guys are hardcore star trek fans um so uh, as you got older uh caught what how did you sh show your star trek love a little bit more i know johnny you, you're wearing the batman shirt you got a uh, shout out to you with the oath batman film y'all check it out when he drops that um i saw you dress up as batman but were you guys also dressing up uh in Star Trek uniforms or making your own, John, let me uh, throw it back to you. Uh, how yeah, did you expand out that love? I'm somewhat ashamed and embarrassed to say that I took duct tape and I would cut the deltas and we had um, 
colored sweatshirts and we made our own makeshift uniforms and we ran around and we converted our basement. We had a barber's chair that someone threw out and we, we hauled that down to the basement and we had, um, we used a big TV to be our, our view screen and we had our makeshift bridge set and we took a wagon and that was our shuttlecraft and we, we yeah, we did, yeah, we did, we did play Star Trek growing up. No, I love it, man. Don't be embarrassed by that. I love the imagination because <laughs> that's what it's all about. As actors, as filmmakers, you start somewhere and I think it's beautiful. That's true that, yeah. Hell yeah. Um, how about you, Johnny? Uh, did you put the Batman uniform away a little bit with the next generation stuff? <laughs> yeah, I was never, I wasn't into costuming back then. You know, I didn't get into costuming until later in life. And only then when I paired it with alcohol, I found it was great to, <laughs> you know, you could mix up some cocktails and I'll wear anything you want, for, you know. But uh, yeah, never did anything as a kid like Star Trek wise. I just, I was almost more intellectual about it, you know, because I would nerd out with my G.I. Joes and my Thundercats and my He-Man you know, that's when I would kind of play. But when it came to Star Trek, I was more into like, oh, you know, it's the stories, you know, it's more about that for me. And I, yeah, I never had the the duct tape uh, Delta on my colored sweater or the shuttlecraft wagon. I kind of wish I did, though. That sounds fun now. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. All right. I'm not going to say my embarrassing stuff, but I'm right there with you, John. <laughs> I'm with you. So uh, expanding out this love, you get older and, uh, you know, it never leaves you. You know, there's things that kind of help us be escapism. That's what this entertainment is, you know, to escape our daily norms and our crazy lives. So, uh, John, the, uh, you're kind of like the ringleader with this all starting off with Farragut Ford, with the, the Starship Farragut. Uh, tell me how bringing your fandom, your, your your love for it, to starting off way back then to now fast forward to Farragut Ford. Um, so I saw the work online of some other fan films. Um, I think most notably the one that stood out was Starship Exeter. And so essentially just copy that format. It was a different ship, different crew, but it was all set in classic Trek. And there was 13 ships in the fleet. So they just, these guys took one of the other ships and they just did a whole universe around them. And when I saw it in 2003, 2004, I was burning disc off my computer and I was giving them everyone, my, my family, Mike Bednar, other People in the Star Trek, I'm like, oh my God, we got to do this. We got to do this. And, and um, so I started to work in 2004 to kind of craft Starship Farragut. It was actually Starship Excalibur and then later changed to Farragut. Um, pulled in my family and friends, got my dad to help build sets. And my best friend who taught me how to do props and models, got him involved and his wife and and we launched it officially. We didn't made up. We made up flyers in 2005 for Shorelave, and we actually went there. We didn't. We did. We we didn't exhibit because we didn't have anything together at that point. It was all conceptual. But I met up a lot of people at the convention. That was kind of our birth date when we actually came alive. And in October, um, took out 10k out of my 401 and bought all the equipment, and we in a, a, a park in Lorton, Virginia. We filmed our, our series trailer. And then the following year we made our pilot and, and then we made animated episodes. And then we, um, last year we just finished up our finale, um, which included a, a, a nice cameo by Stanley. And then, but, but that was filmed in 2015, 2016. And we were already in pre-production and I had actually reached out to Johnny about who I knew knew a lot about Klingons. He, he has a very immaculate, accurate um, Klingon warrior outfit. And he was helping us build, convert my two car garage into a, he was doing up some drawings for the, the Brit, um, a Klingon bird of prey bridge set that we were looking to do. And then the fan film guidelines came out in 2016. And there was this another um, crazy project that, um, alienated, I guess, me and others. I just punted. I just tabled everything for Farragut Forward and for a total of five years. And then last year in the summer, I, I started to miss it. And I had already seen the work of Johnny, two other films that he had worked on, The Killer of Grassy Ridge and The um, Red Eagle One, which my son was in. And I just started to think about it. I, have, I had some of these costumes that were 
we're, we were already in pre-production. My dad was about ready to build some of the set pieces. Um, we were, we had a pilot that was written by Michael Jan Friedman, who well known, um, both author and screenplay writer, um, mm -hmm. both in the Star Trek universe and some of the superhero Marvel Avengers uh, genre franchise. Oh, yeah. And um, so Patrick, I, um, I started thinking I missed, I said, God, I have some of these uniform elements and I've seen Johnny, Johnny's work. And I thought that if, if there was anyone out there that could do this justice, this period, because it is much darker, it's much more serious. It is not brightly lit. It's not campy. It's, um, and it was always going to be the natural progression of our project. And I thought if anyone could do it. And so I wrote a, a, a small script, um, three pages, I think, kicked it over Johnny and asked if he'd be interested in doing it. I love it. So let, let's, let's throw it over to you, Johnny. That's kind of a good segue. Um, yeah. You've been killing it, my friend, watching you. You know, you, you've always been a cosplayer. You know, that's how we met uh, with The Finest. Shout out to our, our friends over at The Finest, uh, the G.I. Joe Costume Club, and just all the other amazing cosplays you've done, my friend. Um, and then seeing you get into acting, you know, for a little bit. Uh, shout out to you. You work on Walking Dead. Uh, uh, Lady Bird. Was it Good Bird or some Lady Bird? The Good Lord Bird. The Good Lord Bird. But uh, <laughs> just watching you, you know, and talking back and forth. Because, you know, I've been an actor a long time. And seeing you always have that passion and love for it. And you getting even more involved. Uh, and, and then getting behind the camera. And then you killed it uh, with our friend Michael uh, uh, on the Killer of Grassy Ridge. Stumbo. Um, yeah, Mike Stumbo. Yes. Um just just this uh, amazing relationship that built between you and John and John. But uh, but was this always what you wanted to, you know, that, did that bug bite after Grassy Ridge and then finding this uh, relationship with John? Yeah, the bug the bug bit me before Killer Grassy Ridge. That's that's why I ended up making Grassy Ridge, because I was sitting on those uh, sets that you just mentioned, you know, doing The Walking Dead and The Good Lord Bird, which, by the way, it's on Showtime. It's Ethan Hawke. It's probably the best performance of Ethan Hawke's career, in my opinion. He plays John Brown, abolitionist, events leading up to Harper's Ferry. Like, it's worth a watch. So, good Lord Bird, check that out. But just as you know, like, there's a lot of downtime on those sets. And if, you're, if your mind kind of goes into learning mode and you get away from the craft services table for a few minutes and just kind of, <laughs> like, just kind of watch what's going on around you, like, it's a great place to learn and watch the masters uh, at work. And, and I just kind of went into learning mode on a lot of those shows that I worked. Um, and, and I kind of found a love, I found a preference that I'd rather be behind the camera than in front of it. And it did not take me long to figure that out. And, uh, you were right there from, uh, you know, day one, when I first started talking about the concept of killer grassy Ridge, you were over here at the house and I mentioned Mike Stumbo has got this great look to him and I want to get him out in the woods and, and, uh, you know, just shoot something. So I remember having that conversation with you and that was, man, two and a half years ago already. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, after that, you know, Grassy Ridge, it did, uh, I was proud of it just period. And oh, yeah. then after that, when it kind of got into the festival circuit, that's really when the addiction happened because, you know, I think it, it ended up going around the world. We hit six continents. We were in over 50 festivals. We had some major wins that I never would have imagined like a debut short film could win. And we just started winning these things. And that was the addiction. You know, when you get that feeling, it's like, man, why am I not cranking one of these out once a year? You know, because I kind of like this. I like listening to all these people say nice things about me. And uh, yeah, getting back into Ready to One, like John mentioned, uh, was lucky to have John's kid, uh, Xavier. First, you know, my first time working with uh, with kid actors, child actors. So I tried to keep, you know, our days less than 15 hours like I do for some of our uh, adult actors. I tried to, you know, take it easy on the kids. Uh, but yeah, just kind of getting into that and then rolling right into the oath. And then when John hit me last year with Farragut forward, you know, I had a, a super full plate and I think I've told John this before. I think if it was a full episode of Farragut, like if it was a 45, you know, 60 page script, there was just no way I could have committed to it. But the beauty of the prologue project, which it, it, that's what it became is the prologue, the first three minutes, it was only a three minute script, a three page script. And I thought, you know what? We can shoot this in a weekend, you know, wrap it up in post in, in a month or two and just get it out there. And I, it was movie era, Rathacon era uh, of Star Trek, which is an era I love. I knew it was like John mentioned, it was going to be dark. It was going to be a little more kind of sinister and atmospheric and uh, brooding. And all those are words kind of right up my alley. So that's why I committed to John. It was three minutes and I knew we could shoot it in a weekend. And that's what we ended up doing. And 
And now here we are and the rest of the story is getting ready to start. So that's what we're uh, trying to raise that money for now so we can finish the story. Hell yeah, I love it. And that's that's why we're doing this, y'all. That's why we're doing this. I want y'all to know and see the commitment. And I just uh, think it's an amazing relationship that uh, I'm happy to see happen. Um, I have, uh, John and I were talking before we started, you know, I've known of John Broughton for a long time. Shout out to Paul Sieber and Dean Rogers. And I've heard all the beauty that is Sarah Shafergut and just how committed you are for this project, uh, John. So uh, seeing that in as a filmmaker outside of that, I, I know for myself, if I ever wanted to do a Star Trek thing, I'm gonna hit you up. You know, I've never done that yet because I wasn't ready to do a Star Trek thing. It, uh, it, that just says a lot you, you know, when you see that commitment. And for you, my, Johnny K, bro, you know, I love you, man. I've known you for a long time. You have such an eye. Uh, you're brilliant. You know, not only as we're dressing up as cosplayers, uh, as G.I. Joe, you're behind the camera shooting and you've had a great eye. And then you saw that love once you did Gra Grassy Ridge and you, you, it's just beautiful, bro. You deserve all those accolades. So now seeing two people that I respect and, and then are coming together, uh, y'all got to support Fair Good Ford. This is going to be a beautiful project once it's all realized. Um, so now let's talk about this combination. Um, I've been tracking with some of the people you've got involved. Uh, let's talk about just some of this. You know, uh, you, you've made a couple of casting announcements, some some production. And that's so amazing to just show people that you're going to get some great content. These people are putting their hearts into this. Um, you, you made some announcements. So I, I want to give a shout out to my buddy, my brother, Wes Johnson. Uh, you had him in a clean on costume. Tell me about that and just the brilliance that you guys are putting into to get it get to get the look right um um i don't i don't know where to start on that one um <laughs> we we were fortunate enough to get i'm trying to remember how we west got connected i don't know if it was through his friendship with paul and their work together um but i mean ultimately when he did he i remember i was in california i was on vacation with the family in i think september and I got a call and he was like, this is Wes Johnson. Um, and he told me who he was. And he said, I want to be in your film. And I never have ever had any celebrity, any high profile actor act actually called me and asked. And he, I would say he even pleaded to be in our production. I was like, wow, this is great. And he was local. And so that was, that was even an, another plus because most of filming would be done here locally. Um, so, Flash forward when we did the, um, the special effects makeup, um, Belle, who's on board doing our, she's actually working on the outfits for him and for Paul Siebert. She is making, I mean, the original conceived creations, she's drawing, she's doing costume design, and then she's then executing on the um, actual costumes themselves. So she came by and we, um, um, we had William J and we had, and I forget her name. Was it Amy? Oh, Ashley. Yeah. Ashley, Ashley. Mel and Ashley, Ashley came and they did the makeup yeah. and, and Johnny can probably elaborate more on that. Yeah. We sat Paul down or Paul, we sat uh, Wes down and we told him he was going to lose his eyebrows. And I said, <laughs> I said, whatever plans you got tonight, you, you might want to cancel it or find some fake eyebrows to put on. Cause you're not going to have them walking out of this makeup test. And uh, I didn't really say that, but we actually did take his eyebrows. So I probably should have warned him. But no, we, uh, yeah, William, Bell, and Ashley. William's been doing Klingon makeup for a long time. Uh, kind of a, a quick period to get Bell and Ashley up to speed on on how to do it. Because it's not just, you don't just slap on some spirit gum and, you know, stick a piece of rubber on your forehead. That's There's a process to it, you know, with some prosade and telesis and all these, you know, words I've learned over the years. But yeah, we uh, we sat West down, got the garb on him, um, threw a wig on him, threw the prosthetic on him, and next thing you know, like he, you always hear about, and you've seen it, Patrick. Like you know, these actors will transform before your very eyes, and you won't get it until they're fully, you know, they're fully right. done up. And yeah. I noticed, you know, Wes, he was working on the voice uh, with me, and the first voice he gave me. You know, it was this proud Klingon warrior. And he was doing this while he was in the makeup, obviously. And it was this proud Klingon warrior. And he said, is, is that the voice you want? I said, no, give me the voice of that guy 30 years from now. Give me the, you know, kind of older down the road. Used to be a proud Klingon warrior. Now might be something a little different. And he, he nailed it on the second take. And, you know, I told him, I said, hey, man, with that voice, like you're going to be going places in life. And for uh, for those that don't know, Wes, Wes has gone plenty of places in life. He's a, oh, yeah. Yeah. He's a he's, he's an in-house. 
in-house voice of uh, in-house voice of the Washington Capitals hockey yeah. team, and done a lot of great uh, voice work and video games, and and uh, you know a great uh, a great uh, actor in his own right. And yeah, he nailed that voice, and we got him in, and, and he stayed in character. He stayed in voice the entire time. He had that prosthetic on, and then uh, I don't know. We probably had him in in like an hour. Did some publicity shots and then uh, ripped his eyebrows off when we uh, took it off of him and sent him on his merry way with a bandaid on his forehead. But no, he, uh, he nailed it. And he stayed in character like the entire time he was in the prosthetic and uh, just spending those few hours with Wes. That was actually my first time meeting him was that makeup test. And uh, just spending those few hours with him, it actually gets me excited to work with him on set because oh, yeah. you can already tell what a great guy he is and, and he gets it. And by the way, He's a big Star Trek fan too, by the way. So yeah, I think that's probably another reason why he was like, "Yeah, I got to get involved and hit up John." Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, such a great guy. Yeah, I, yeah, I've known him for years. And y'all, t- if y'all are in the DC area, he gives voiceover lessons. Shout, uh, check out Wes Johnson. Look him up. He's he's amazing. Um, he's done Fallout. He's done a bunch of Bethesda games. He's amazing. Um, I just love that all my friends are getting together. This is beautiful. Um, so you guys are you you've and you've got another great makeup artist. I think I saw. Uh, there was a, a, a mon, or was that you? I think you already oh. mentioned that, John. Yes, um, Derek Rutledge, who is the, um, I say he's, it's no, um, it's no secret. He is the exclusive makeup artist to Oprah Winfrey. He met Oprah through Michelle Obama. Um, Derek Rutledge lives in D.C., and when Michelle Obama was first lady and he was doing her makeup, Oprah asked Michelle Obama, who does your makeup? And that's how he became um, her exclusive makeup artist and he travels to wherever um, she goes. He, he just came back from Hawaii. He was over there for a week at her, her home in, in Hawaii and came back. But um, last year sometime, I knew that it was the 30th anniversary coming up for Star Trek 60 Undiscovered Country. And Derek, who has known Tanya and has worked with her for many years, has always referred to Tanya as his Amon. He always likes working, um, doing makeup on her face. And I always, that always stayed in my mind. And I was thinking, oh my God, 30th anniversary, Star Trek Six. Tanya could be done. We could do a nice homage, just to acknowledge the 30th uh, milestone. And um, he did it. And um, it wasn't, I, I <laughs> Honestly, I didn't have any tie-in to make it in the film or even really to promote our, obviously I was going to promote our Indiegogo, but it wasn't that intent. It was really the, the intent to do something as a nice homage working with my wife to acknowledge the 30th anniversary of Star Trek. And he did the makeup and Iman um, even gave it a thumbs up saying nailed it. And of Derek's, of all his thousands of followers on Instagram, that's his number one video right now. I mean, within, I think two days it had 6,000. I mean, and it's just, I don't know what, what it is now, but it, I remember a couple of days after he shared what the head yeah. count was, but it's gotten a lot of, and then just, so Johnny calls me up and he's like, dude, what have you been doing? Like, 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 you know, we gotta, we gotta have her in. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, and, and it's like, OK, I mean, yeah, I was like, this is great. I'm, I'm glad that he was. It's nice to, to have her. She was going to be in as part of our film, bringing back Moretti. She was um, she was in our pilot. She was in the animated episodes and she was the voice of the Farragut computer um, when we did the crossing. And so it was I had wanted to bring Moretti, the character back. Um, she had to take a hiatus after we were having family and children. and. Um, filming just wasn't going to be able to, you know, with all that going on, but yeah. So, but yeah, I'm glad that Johnny was able to not only bring her into, there's a, there was a kind of a purposeful meaning for her being in the script. I called John up, Patrick. I said, I said, what else you got up your sleeve? What else are you keeping for me over there? You, you decked your wife out as Iman. She looks perfect. She looks exactly yeah. like Iman from Star Trek six. And we're making a movie era Star Trek film. So I called John. I said, what else are you, are you keeping for me over there? Like, give me, give me some more surprises. Yeah. She went into the script immediately. And, and like John said, she's not just wallpaper, you know, she's got a, she's got a function there and I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, to, to using that in the film. That's exciting. That's exciting and absolutely beautiful. And I think so very sweet, John, getting the whole family like involved to, to a degree, you know, as 
they're willing because I know for me, it's like when I got try to get my daughter and family, like, I don't know. So it's kind of cool when you can make that happen. I love it. Um, I, another thing I wanted to talk about that really caught my eye, uh, practical effects. Um, I think I saw that you're building some of the sh ships as well. Uh, can I throw it back to you, Johnny K? Uh, I know that's a passion of yours as well. And because we're old school guys, right? And uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, we're old school and and I'm a dinosaur that likes to make things as difficult as possible. <laughs> uh, I will do anything to not use a green screen unless we have to. Uh, yeah, it was one of our early pre-production meetings last year. John and I were talking about just overall this project, what it means, uh, given that it is, you know, think about it. It's a period piece. You know, what we're working on is a period piece that was, you know, filmed in the 80s, but set 200 years from now. So it's a weird period piece. But we wanted to kind of do a tribute and an homage to like 80s filmmaking, uh, industrial light and magic, like the Wizards at ILM, you know, who I worshipped as a kid with everything from Star Wars and uh, Star Trek and everything. I'd just name a movie. Um, but, you know, worship that. And I told John last year when we met for the prologue, I said, since we're doing 80s movie era of Trek, how cool would it be if we actually use practical models? You know, let's get away from the keyboard, get away from the ones and zeros and actually build model kits light them up and film them just like they did X-Wings and Star Destroyers and, and any, you know, any Star Trek ship, by the way, until I guess probably the late nineties or so. And John, you know, at that point we were like two little kids because John's eyes got real big and he's like, Oh, that's perfect. Let's do it. And uh, that's about the same time I threatened to shoot this prologue using actual film too. I'm like, yeah, let's just shoot it on film too. Cause it'll look cooler. And I got vetoed on that. And I'm glad I did. Cause that's a different <laughs> animal, but yeah, we uh, ended up, um, we got Mike Bednar, who John's mentioned a couple times. It's his best friend, and he's also an actor in Farragut Forward, Starship Farragut, and he's a master model maker and knows exactly what he's doing with the model kits. Uh, that Klingon bird of prey that we used in the prologue, it's the last four seconds. You know, that thing is only – wingspan is probably 15 inches wide. He stuffed that thing full of, like, 36 LEDs. Uh, you know, the wings articulate. Like, it's it's an amazing model by itself, and I had a blast shooting it. You know, it – took me a lot longer to do and I underestimated the work involved in it like I do with everything uh, but the results really paid off and, and now moving forward into the uh, kind of the bigger piece of the of the story we're not going to be able to use 100% practical models uh, I want to use as much as possible but I also know we're going to have to throw some CG in there too just for uh, for ease and convenience because you can't shoot everything practical models uh, but we're going to shoot as much as we can uh, with practical ships and Mike is hard at work building some uh, some extra model kits right now for us i'm so excited i love it i love it. when i saw that too the yeah the the filmmaker in me was just like oh and then i'm like damn johnny you you really putting it all, all some work on yourself because it's gonna take a lot you know and i'm sure you already know uh to, to get all that there so uh we have this indiegogo campaign this is what we're talking about this is what we're promoting we want all the monies to my fellas right now we want it to blast this off into the universe uh Talk about this Indiegogo campaign. What, what more you're trying to generate and, and for this visual, uh, that masterpiece that we're going to get. Uh, back to you, John. Um, we would like to try and reach our goal of 30,000. Um, I know right now with everything going on in the world, um, Ukraine, inflation, you've got post-pandemic, you got people, it, it's, it's some tough times. Um, we get that. Um, anything that you could do to help um, donate or even just spread the word. Just spreading the word itself and extending to other people within your network, the bigger the net, the, the more fish that we can catch. And the um, the money is going primarily for the sets um, and then probably the post-production piece. If we have to, in addition to the sets or in addition to the physical models that we'll be filming, we also will have a hybrid of some CGI um, effect shots because you know you're gonna have ship battles you're gonna have moving ships and and what have you um but most of it is going to be going to sets all the money right now has been uh, all the money outside our crowdfunder has already gone into purchasing all the materials to make the uniform so we're talking thousands of dollars already spent on just wardrobe alone those uniforms are elaborate garments they're not just a one-piece pullover like in the classic trick they're much more sophisticated and much more expensive we're not talking about buying that we're not talking about purchasing stuff for the klingon warriors uniforms we are talking about primarily the sets the sets that we hope to not only film this film but possibly some others down the road 
So you're you're dealing with the bridge set and some other starship sets. The Klingon sets, I, I started today working with my dad, building some additional set pieces that will be needed. So I think those sets will be able, on the Klingon side, they're not as expensive. But So we're asking you to help finance a starship and, and that you'll be able to see hopefully in more than just one film. And what we're doing is not out there now. If you look at what is out there, there's a very oversaturated fan film market but it's primarily in Classic Trek and some of the TNG on up spinoffs. And that's it. I mean, what we're doing is no one else is, is doing it to the extent of a Hollywood 1980s film that you would walk into a theater and see. So that's what we're looking for you to help finance. Awesome. Y'all can skip McDonald's for the week. Hopefully you aren't doing McDonald's, but yeah. Save your lunch money. Put it towards these fellas. They're going to give you some Star Trek goodness that uh, I think you're going to love. Um, Johnny K. So what's uh, we're going to meet this goal. I, I, I have the feeling for you, brothers, that we're going to meet this goal. Uh, the love is there. Uh, so once it is out there, uh, Johnny, if you can uh, say, say the, uh, tell me some plans for it. And, you know, are you going to take, take it on the road festival circuit like you've been doing with some of your films, uh, maybe some conventions, maybe pull out some of the, these costumes and show them at the convention so they can see kind of the, the magic that you guys are putting together yeah for sure we actually we just exhibited at uh farpoint convention last month i guess last weekend of february and that's uh you know kind of in uh, towson maryland just north of baltimore and we brought some of the costumes there john had some of his you know on display uh our buddy garrett uh dare who is a member of our crew and cast uh, klingon you know subject matter expert he brought uh, down a lot of his actually screen used gear uh, from next generation and some other pieces. And, and we show that off. And yeah, for the future of this, I think some, uh, don't know if it'll get the, you know, the huge festival tour. Uh, we'll have to look and see what uh, CBS's opinion is on uh, what we can do with fan films. We know YouTube is going to be our primary distribution for that. Uh, that said, you know, there's plenty of fan film, um, you know, um, festivals out there and conventions, you know, that want to screen, uh, fan productions and things like that. I think we actually have already entered our prologue into one or two of those. So yeah, I don't know how uh, elaborate the road show is going to be on this, but right now, I mean, you know, eye on the prize, we're just focusing on making the thing right now and we can figure out, uh, you know, what we want to do with it outside of YouTube, you know, once the thing is made, but it's kind of taken one day, a step at a time. And, you know, John, as John can attest, you know, we have frequent production meetings. We have our standing weekly production meeting. The set guys are meeting weekly. Uh, we're getting ready to do a, uh, a table read, you know, with the actors coming up in, in just a few weeks. And there's a heck of a lot of things going on, you know, kind of behind the scenes. It's not just like we're sitting around watching Indiegogo, seeing how much money we raise. I mean, there's actively, you know, as you know, Pat, you know, it's like a second job, you know, it's just, at least 40 hours a week, nights and weekends. John mentioned he's been building some set stuff today with his dad. It's just relentless. And especially now that we're in the last two weeks of uh, Indiegogo, you know, we can't take the foot off the gas pedal right now. We got to give it more gas because we only got two more weeks to, to raise as much money as we can. So. All right. Well, I'm excited for you guys. And I know you're going to meet that goal because the passion is there. You got to love what you do. Uh, and, and I can see that commitment. And so I'm excited for you both gentlemen. And uh, this isn't going to be the first uh, or the last conversation. I mean, that's, this isn't going to be the last conversation we're going to have about Farragut Ford. I want to be talking as this builds out because we're going to meet this goal. Uh, I would love to see what you're doing and, and talk about it along the way. Uh, let my fans uh, see some behind the scenes and just show love and, and so show support uh, for this amazing project. Again, I'm super excited to what you guys are going to deliver to us as Star Trek fans. Uh, before we go, uh, for those that want to continue uh, and support this journey, I'll have some of the information in the description below. So you can also go to Indiegogo and show with some monetary love. Uh, but for those that might just be listening right now, um, John, uh, let me start, go back with you. Uh, can you give some of your socials, uh, just everything that, uh, for those that are maybe driving right now, how they can check you out online and follow you? Um, we have a Farragut Forward Facebook page. It is, is part of our Starship Farragut. We just converted our Starship Farragut to be both Starship Farragut and, and, and Farragut Forward since it's, it's the next chapter uh, in the next chapter, hopefully, of our fan base. Um, Instagram, we have Farragut Films. So if they do a search primarily, and then on Twitter, it's Farragut Films, too. So either Farragut Films or Farragut Forward, you, you will find us. 
There you go. So give all the fair get love there. My buddy Johnny K with Chaotica and just everything, the oath, uh, killer of Grassy Ridge. Uh, you got a million and one things happening, Johnny. How can they check you out? Yeah, Chaotica Studios, uh, common spelling, spelled with a K, K-A-O-T-S-E-A. -E yep, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, and then you can find me personally. I am, best place to get me is Twitter, and I'm at that Johnny K guy on Twitter and also Instagram, which I don't use, but I am there. I'm not a bot. <laughs> I love it. Please give my brothers some love. Uh, again, you see the passion. You see the commitment. They're going to deliver you some excellence. Uh, I, I just can't wait. Farragut forward all the way. Uh, show them love. For me, it's the legend Kuya P on Twitter, TikTok, and IG. And of course, here at the NRW and at Nerdlease Wednesday, where nerds rule the world. We're out of here, guys. <laughs>this is john broughton with farragut films and farragut forward this is johnny k also with farragut forward and with chaotica studios we are going to be on the nrw talking some farragut forward we have our indiegogo live right now please find farragut forward on indiegogo help us fund this awesome star trek fan production it's going to be one of the biggest star trek fan productions ever made we need your help we're closing in on our last push for indiegogo so if you can join us let's talk on the nrw Let's talk about Farragut Forward and let's help, help us meet this goal.